How's it going guys? I'm John. Uh, I'm the videographer. I've been shooting uh, rod building videos with Roger and Flexco for over 10 years now. And not only have I learned a lot about rod building, but I've seen Roger working with tools and the techniques with these tools uh, that I think is real interesting and can be a beneficial uh, knowledge to a lot of rod builders out there. And uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a minute just to kind of go over these tools and the techniques and show how uh, uh, show the advantages of, uh, of this and how it makes you a better rod builder. Maybe you've seen our guide foot adhesive video, which is great for securing your guides to your blank prior to wrapping. Well, what Roger has is a butane lighter that he's gotten from Home Depot. And what he's done is he's taken the guide foot adhesive, heated up one end, and secured it right here to the body of the lighter. And it really frees things up when you're juggling all these different things and you don't want your guide to cool down before you get to your blank. So this is how it works. You heat up your guide, drag it through the adhesive. It just makes it easier just to get it right on your blank real fast. Okay, another great tool is this propane torch that uh, you can get this from Home Depot. And the first great thing about it, it's so easy to use. It's just got a simple trigger. It's that easy. And, uh, you know, we, we like to use it to get bubbles out of finish immediately. We always say, Mix up your finish, pour it out on aluminum foil, and you hit it with this, just fan it like that, all the bubbles are gone instantly. The same applies on your rod blank. You just wanna fan it like this, really fast, all the bubbles will be gone while your rod's turning, as well as it'll cause that finish to soak in through those threads down to the rod blank. Um, finally, um, this is a really great tool when working with tip tops, especially when you're taking them off. Whether it's held on by five minute epoxy or thermal adhesive, this will pinpoint flash heat it and it won't penetrate down to the rod blank where you don't want it. Then you can just get the tip top right off and go on about your business. Not too long ago, Roger was looking for some great scissors to cut through braided line on all his fishing reels. And what he did was he called up Fiskers, who makes quality scissors. And what they told him was a little bit surprising. They said, check out the $1.99 kid scissors you can find at Office Depot. And so he did, and it turns out they cut through braided line like butter, uh, as well as nylon fishing rod wrapping thread. So at $1.99, pick up a few pair of them. This is the best thing we found for tying off wraps. And what we have here is some Power Pro Super Slick 15 pound braided line. Uh, we like yellow for visibility. And what we've done is you take just a little loop of it, tie it off, and in the last bit of your wrap, you just slide it up just like normal, finish off your wrap. Out of all the testing we've done, we've had no problems with this interfering with our thread. Cut it off. And when you pull it through, it just pulls through really nice and it'll never break. It's the last thing you want to deal with in the last part of your wrap to have your loop snap on you. For years here at Flexcoat, we've used a tool made of polished cow bone to burnish and pack our thread wraps. This material seems to be the perfect hardness, much like your thumbnail for working your wraps without damaging the thread or the rod blank. Roger found this great little knife sharpener that's got a belt sander in it, and all of our knives couldn't be sharper around here. But you know, it didn't take as long as rod builders to figure out how we could use it to uh, shape our guide feed for preparing a nice transition between the rod blank and your guide when your thread is wrapping up on it. And let me show you how we do it. Okay, you're just looking to get a good transition and you just rock it back and forth there and it gives you a nice smooth transition for that thread to go up on that guide foot. Looks good. Here we are with a micro guide, got some needle nose pliers to hold it. Doesn't take much to get that uh, ramp. Now that is a good transition for your thread from your rod blank to your guide foot. Okay, now that we've gone through all these tools that we use around here at Flexcoat, uh, hopefully there's one that's maybe caught your eye that, 
that you could use. And, you know, we're always curious to hear about what you guys use, what makes your life easier or better as a rod builder. So uh, stay in touch and let us know.